Hello everybody, today we're going to be taking a look at Unit 1, Multivariable Functions. Our learning objective is I can rewrite multivariable functions to express any variable in terms of the others to help solve more effectively. Alright, so let's look at two examples of this on this page here. Um, and this page should be in the link, so you should be, um, should be able to follow along as I take these notes here. So the instructions say, use inverse operations to rearrange the following multivariable functions to isolate each variable in terms of the others. Then choose the correct one to solve the word problem the easiest. All right, so that's kind of a lot of technical words, but um, I think it'll be a lot easier as we take a look at examples. So our first example goes with the relationship between distance, rate, and time. Um, and you think of your rate as your speed that you're traveling usually. So you're going a certain amount of distance, um, going a certain speed, it's called your rate, and a certain amount of time. Um, and that relationship is shown like this. Your distance traveled is equal to your rate times your time. Um, so what we're going to do is rearrange these variables so that we're not just solving for distance. We're going to solve for the rate and we're gonna solve for the time as well. Um, so instead of rewriting it like this way, we're gonna use variables D, R, and T for distance, rate, and time. Um, as you can see, we already have one of the three equations. So we have distance is equal to rate times time. What we need to do is rearrange these variables so that we solve for our rate, and then again, so that we solve for our time. Um, in terms of the other variables. Okay, so let's start with our rate. Um, in order to figure out what our rate is equal to, we need to start with our original equation. So distance is equal to our rate times our time. We know that's for sure. Now to isolate the rate, so where rate is equal to something in terms of distance and time, we need to kind of get rid of this T on this side of the equals. What we're going to do is use the inverse operation to move it to the other side of the equation. So in this case, we are doing our rate times our time. So the inverse operation of multiplication is division. That's going to undo that operation and move your time to the other side. So if we divide by T here, then we also need to divide by T here just to keep our equation balanced. Remember, whatever we do to one side of the equal sign, we got to do it to the other side of the equals just to keep everything you know, equaled out. So now that we've, we have time here and we're dividing by time, that is can't going to cancel each other out. So we can cancel that out. And now we have rate is all by itself on one side of the equal. So rate is equal to your distance divided by your time. I'm going to write that one more time here, your distance over your time. Okay. Now I'll go up to the top because I have one equation here. I'm going to write all three across the top. So rate is equal to your distance divided by your time. All right. I'm going to just do a little line here just to separate. These are going to be our three equations up here, and this is kind of just where I'm doing my work. All right, so now we're going to figure out what time is equal to in terms of distance and rate. Um, so like before, we're going to start with our original equation, distance equals rate times time. We know that to be true. Now we need to rearrange it so that we're time is equal to um, something. Now, very similar to before, um, where we divided by time, um, because that this is multiplication, so we had to use division. Um, again, we have multiplication here, rate times time. So to undo this operation, in order to move rate to the other side, we need to divide by our rate on both sides of the equals. All right, rate is going to cancel right there. And we're pretty much done. We have time is equal to your distance divided by your rate. So time is equal to your distance divided by rate. Okay, so T is equal to D, oh, D over R. So now we have three equations here. Distance equals rate times time, rate equals distance divided by time, and time equals distance divided by rate. 
All right, so now what we're gonna do, we're gonna read a very simple word problem here. Um, and kind of the key to this lesson is choosing the correct one of these equations so that you solve the equation the easiest. All right, um, so this word problem goes like this. How much time will it take a car traveling 40 miles per hour to go a distance of 200 miles? So we're solving for how much time we are given, we need to know time, we're given 40 miles per hour and a distance of 200 miles. So we're given our rate, right? This is our rate, 40 miles per hour. And our distance is also given to us, right? This is our distance. So we know these two things, the rate and the distance. And we have to figure out how much time. So if we're given rate and distance, we need to choose the equation that solves for our time using our rate and our distance, okay? So if we're solving for time, we want time is gonna be equal to something with rate and distance. Um, so if I look at these three equations, I'm gonna be choosing this one right here, right? because I'm gonna solve for time in terms of distance and rate, right? And that's kind of what's going on here. I'm solving for time and I'm given my rate and my distance. So if you could very easily solve it with these two, but this is actually the easiest method because in this case, I'm just gonna go time is equal to distance over rate, distance over rate, and that's equal to our distances what, 200, 200 miles over our rate, 40 uh, miles per hour. Oh, that's definitely a 4D there. And now this makes it very simple because we have time is equal to 200 divided by our 40. Um, I'm just gonna go to my calculator here just to be sure. 200 divided by 40. Five. So this is going to be equal to five um, hours since we're dealing with miles per hour. Okay. All right. Let's look at the second example. Uh, move the calculator there. Our next equation is this: volume is equal to pi times radius squared times your height. Um, this is the equation for the volume of a cylinder. So if you imagine, I could draw like a tiny little cylinder here. Um, I guess something like that. Um, pi times your radius squared is the area of the, you know, the top or the bottom, right? And then times your height. So this is your height, your radius is, you know, the radius of your top or bottom, whatever. So we're finding the volume of a cylinder shape like that. Uh, so we're already given um, this equation, volume equals pi times radius squared times height. So I'm gonna put this in variable form here, um, right here. So our volume is equal to pi times radius squared times your height. Now we wanna rearrange this equation so that we're solving for the radius and then we're solving for the height, okay? So let's do some of that scratch work down here. So if we wanna isolate our radius by itself, um, we are gonna start with our original equation. Volume equals pi times radius squared times your height, okay? Now we wanna solve for just radius by itself. Uh, so what we're gonna do, we need to move a lot of stuff to the other side. So we have a lot of multiplication going on here. Um, so similar to before, to undo multiplication, we are gonna divide. So we need to divide our pi to the other side and divide our height to the other side. I'm gonna start with pi. Just remember, we always have to do, you know, we do one side, something to one side of the equals, we gotta do it to the other side, okay? So pi will cancel with pi here. So now we have volume divided by pi is equal to our radius squared times our height. 
Now we haven't achieved our objective yet. We want radius all by itself. Um, so we have radius squared times our height. Again, this is multiplication. So to undo that operation, we divide. Um, and we're going to divide this by height too. Height divided by height. Um, radius squared is equal to our volume divided by, now this is kind of funky because it's volume divided by pi divided by h. Um, and what you do there is both of those things just end up in your denominator. Okay, so we're getting much closer. Now we have our radius squared is equal to this here. Um, now to undo the squared operation, we still don't have our what we want. We don't want radius by itself. So to undo the squared operation, radius squared, we have to take the square root, right? And of course we have to do both sides, right? So that there. So our final equation, try to squeeze it in here. Our radius is gonna equal the square root of our volume divided by pi times our height, all right? So there we've done it. So we have radius all by itself in terms of our volume and our height, all right? And remember pi is just some number, so you don't really have to think of it as a variable. This is actually just a number like nine or 12 or whatever. It's 3.14 or whatever. So think of pi as just a number, it's not a variable. So our radius is equal to big square root of our volume divided by pi over our height. All right. So that's our second equation. This was our first one. Now we got our second one. Um, last equation we're going to isolate just for our height. So I'm going to do a little line here just to give myself some room. Um, again, start with your original equation. Volume equals pi times radius squared times height. And now we're going to isolate our height by itself. All right. So again, this is all multiplication here. Um, so it's pretty simple. We could just, similar to what we've done before, is we just are going to use the inverse operation of multiplication, which is division. And we're going to just divide things on this side over kind of to the other side of the equals. So I'm going to start with pi. Pi divided by pi cancels. Of course, I have to do it on both sides of the equals. So our volume divided by pi is equal to r squared over h, or times h. Still don't have h by itself. Um, so we need to divide again, because this is just multiplication. Um, this is r squared. Now, it's, a lot of students might wonder, like, oh, why don't I take the square root of that? Remember, this is height times our radius squared. So we are multiplying here. Um, we don't, we can divide by the radius squared because radius squared divided by radius squared, that cancels, right? So that cancels that whole thing on this side. And this divides by radius squared on this side. So now we've done it. We can see that we have our height is equal to this side over here. And this is kind of looking sloppy. So I'm going to rewrite it one final time. Our height is equal to our volume divided by pi times our radius squared. And then I'm going to rewrite it up here just so I have all my equations in the same spot. Volume divided by um, pi times radius squared. All right, so a little more involved here. Um, let's take a look at the word problem. So a soda can has a height of 12 centimeters and holds 360 cubic centimeters of soda. Um, what is its radius? All right. So we are given the height and we are also given 360 cubic centimeters. This is obviously the height. This is a volume cubic centimeters, right? And we are solving for the radius. All right. So of these three equations, we're going to ask ourselves which one solves for the radius in terms of our height and our volume. All right. And so I'm going to look at these three and determine that this one here 
is going to do exactly what we're asking for. Because we're solving for the radius in terms of volume and height. It's nice because what we can do is the volume and the height just turn into numbers. So when we have not all numbers on one side of the equals, we can type that into our calculator and it's going to give our answer. Um, when you have what you're solving for mixed in with a bunch of numbers, um, it, you got to do a bunch of operations. So this is the easiest equation to solve. So our radius is going to be equal to the square root of our volume over our pi times our height. And what's nice about this is we are given our volume and our height. So big square root, um, volume is 360 divided by pi times our height. All right. And now we can use our calculator to solve this. All right. I'm going to go to my calculator here. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, uh, I can do it all in one step. So I'm going to do the square root of, what I'm going to do, I'm going to, I like to put fractions in uh, parentheses just to make my work a little bit easier. Um, so I have in my numerator 360, and that is going to be divided by my denominator, which is pi times 12. So I'm going to put that in parentheses because I know um, pi times 12. Um, and that looks about right there. Finish off, oh, finish off the, the parentheses there. Um, hit enter. And there we go. 3.0. Um, nine, and that would probably be in centimeters because so we're dealing with cubic centimeters. So that would be the radius of our soda can. And that seems about right for a soda can, about three centimeters um, for its radius. All right, so that's all for the video. On the back side, you have um, two more problems, very similar. Um, so you can work on those. Thank you very much, bye.